Welcome guys to the Christian Podcast 101 and I hope that you've had you had a hope you have had a lovely day <laughs> or a lovely <laughs> night. <laughs> but um <laughs> cool. Um today's topic I want to talk to you guys about is solving dilemmas. So this solving dilemmas is pornography, masturbation and suicidal thoughts and depression. There's a lot of dilemmas. This dilemma is very important. So the first before I start, let's introduce the uh, guest again. Hi guys, Gifted Bells and all social media. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna put a link uh, 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 YouTube, YouTube channel <laughs> down below as well. Oh yeah, I also did a recent collab. Debating. Yeah, debating was really debating. good. Yeah. Belinda. Hi guys, I'm Belinda. I'm the face behind Transparency Talks. Brother Joel. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. Welcome guys. Welcome. So cool. The first dilemma I want to ask you is that. Ah, right, cool. This is the first dilemma. So I've been going through depression for one year now. I feel completely empty and my heart has become very numb. I have no joy in my heart. How do I get rid of my emptiness that I'm feeling? You can, bro, you can also speak about it as well. You can, you can, it, wait, what, wait, I, I can't, uh, but you know, if you have something to say, you can, you can talk out loud as well, if you want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah just, just, just talk, just talk as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, if you have something to say, just talk. Cool, so let me say it again. So I've been going through depression for one year now. I feel completely empty and my heart has become very numb. I, I feel, I have no joy in my heart. How do do I get rid of that emptiness I'm feeling? Um, (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, Joy never leaves. So it's not joy that you're not feeling, it's happiness. Happiness goes, joy is always in our heart, whether you like or not, you're always gonna be joyful. Mm. Um, I think the first thing you should do is acknowledge why you're in that situation. Acknowledge what is triggering you, what's sad, what's making you sad, sorry, what is making you depressed and why you're feeling like that. Once you get that, bring it to God. I mean, it's easier said than done because every every Christian says that we give it to God and whatnot. Mm. But I feel like just take it easy. Like you can start by maybe just even writing. That's what I did. Before I did mm. prayer, I wrote, I got a notebook and I started writing my feelings. Mm-hmm. Then I started speaking about my feelings to God, praying more. And yeah, so take it slow. Have a have a routine, mm. a routine for you that works for you. Don't follow other people because they're praying fast. They might work for them, but it might not work for you. So do what you can. Explore always as well. Explore always, and yeah, it will just work. Mm. Edwin, she have something to add on as well. The depression. She's been going through depression for one year in it, and she feels completely empty. What do you think she should do? Um, it's a difficult situation, and that duration is really long. Mm. One year, that's serious. Mm. What I'll say is um, she should try and see if she can get professional help. Okay. Also, she needs to get closer to, to God. Mm. She should um, ask herself, like, what is my relationship with God? Um, how close am I to God in the Word? How knowledgeable am I in the Word? Mm. I know it's like um, Bell said, it's easier said than that, but mm. she has to do something. If she can seek professional help, um, she has to because, um, yeah, indeed they help sometimes. And also she has to pray. She has to invite people in, her loved ones. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Her, her trustees, like people that she trusts with it. Mm. Yeah, because I know there are people that you might be comfortable speaking to about mm. certain stuff that you're going through. So she needs to invite those people in as well because it's hard really inviting people in because you might think that they don't understand you. Mm. But sometimes people actually do. Mm. In my situation, they might not understand me, but what about yours? I don't know her. Mm. So she should try and as much as possible to the best of her ability to invite people in and talk about how she's feeling, communicate. Mm. That is really, really important, communication. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, Joel? Oh, wow. Melo said it all up. Um, I, I would just say literally counselling. Go talk to your pastor. Mm. Oh, if she has if, a pastor. If yeah. you have a pastor. She might not even be really, like, mm-hmm. a Christian. If you're not even a Christian, mm. ooh, this is a hard saying. <laughs> now I'm joking. Um, I would encourage you to definitely speak to someone. Start from there. Mm. I would encourage you to speak to someone because if you don't, if you don't, yeah. it'll, it'll be very difficult. Yeah. Left. But you're trying. We're trying. We're trying. Mm. Belinda? Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, so yeah, the Bible says, "Cast your yeah, cast your burdens onto Him, for He cares for you." So in other words, everything you're going through, whether you're a Christian or not, yeah, cast your burden onto God. This is make, if you're not a Christian, this is a time to get to know God. Or if you're a Christian, this is a time to even depend on Him even more. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, um, "He who covers his sin will not prosper, but he who confesses and renounces it can find mercy." In other words, if you confess it to God, the Bible says, "Confess and confess." Yeah. 
if you confess with your mouth and believe your heart, you shall be saved. So in other words, if you confess and be transparent of what you're going through, yeah, then you're able to come out what you're going through. Because depression is actually a very big thing, especially in this generation as well. This generation goes through depression a lot, but when you depend on God, when God is your, your source and, and everything, yeah, then God is able to help you and meet you at the very end. And also, um, I also require fasting as well. If you're going through something, yeah, go on a fast. Fasting, um, it's not just um, starving yourself, but it's actually feeding your spirit. So, yeah. um, so maybe you might delete social media, certain yeah. websites, maybe like go off, like go off maybe social media, like mm. go, what, what's, it, what's a social media? Is it a... Um, social media fast? Social media fast, there's a word for it, but I forgot. Hiatus? Uh, hi- hiatus, yeah, oh. something like that. Yeah. Go, on, go on a fast so that you can actually um, hear from God because this depression is actually a very difficult thing and you can't do it by yourself. You need the spirit of God. You need God to help you. And once God helps you, I'm telling you, you're going to come through like never before. You're going you're to you're become who God has called you to be. Yeah, but yeah. Um, cool, have you got anything to add on or is that it? No, that's it. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next dialogue. Actually, no, wait, sorry. So let, let, let me add one thing as well. <laughs> so I forgot this. Even Jesus, sometimes when you're going through depression as well, you might feel forsaken, but you're actually not forsaken. The only person who was forsaken was Jesus, and that was because of our sin. So in other words, Jesus became forsaken so that we will never become forsaken oh, by wow. the Father. Mm. So I believe that God has already taken your place of being forsaken. So sometimes you might feel forsaken, yeah, but God is, is by your side. He's ready to meet you at your very end. So don't don't feel like God is, is never God is not there. He's there. He's there by your side. And the Bible says that um, in Job it says that even though um, even though what is it? Sorry, trying to figure. Even though He slay me, yet, yes, yes, trust, yes, that's the one. Yeah. Even though He slays me, I will yet trust in Him. In other words, even though I'm going through the fire, I'm still gonna trust in God. Why? Because God is in me. God is in in the fire with me. You know what I'm trying to say? Like the four Hebrew boys. God was in the fire with them, and what did they come? They came out better than the way they used to be. They came out well purified, even better. But yeah, sorry, that's what I was saying. Cool. Um, you got anything to add on? No, right, cool. So let's move on to the next one. All right, cool. This is a very good one. So I have, I, I had a friend who I used to talk to. Wait, so I had a friend who I used to be close to. She was talking behind my back in terms of speaking to my boyfriend. So when I used to, when, so when I used, when I used to be in a relationship, yeah, she was speaking to the same guy I was speaking to. I have tried hard to forgive her, but I can't. Every time I look at her, she reminds me of what she has done to me. Eee. What should I do? This is a techie one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but like, she violated it. Okay, what I'll say is this. Wow, there's a lot of meat in that, bro. That's painful. Mm-hmm. I- I'll be real, man. If you're watching this, firm it. But what I'll say is this. Okay, Um, what I'll say is forgiveness is also internalizing a debt someone else has done to you. Mm. It sucks. Mm. Jesus forgave us. And one of the things that I feel like he said, if you do not forgive others, your trespasses, never your father in heaven forgive yeah, you. Forgive you he said yeah. that plain, black and white. That's period. Bro. Mm. Explain not me that, that to them, it. though. Huh? Explain that to them. So in the sense of like, if you don't forgive others your sin, plainly, according to what scripture says, God won't forgive you. In other mm. words, you're like, someone did you dirty, you just cannot forgive that person. Mm. So Jesus was able to forgive you, but you can't forgive that person. Mm. And it's like, it really magnifies how much you love Christ if you're able to forgive mm. someone else. Like I said, paying a debt that someone did to you mm. is painful because really is unforgiveness is because you feel that someone wronged you. Mm. I wouldn't be battling with unforgiveness if I never felt that someone wronged me. Mm. If I felt that this person wronged me and they have a debt to pay, mm. even if it's as simple as I'm sorry, financially, whatever it may be, mm. you have to pay that debt. Mm. That's the way how we humans feel like yeah, we're about yeah, with yeah, unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah. But true forgiveness is paying that debt, internalizing and saying, I forgive that person. Mm. Um, so in terms of what your friend did, I'll be real, that is probably very painful. Being in a relationship, what did she do? Um, she was speaking to her boyfriend when she was in a relationship. So basically they were both speaking to the same person at the same time. No, she was in a relationship with the boy, but the girl was speaking to the boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, yeah. yeah. You gotta let go, bro. Do you know what I mean? If he was for you to begin with, he wouldn't... If the Bible mm. says a man should love his wife. I understand he might not be your husband. But the reality is he should be working towards yeah. that, bro. Mm. If he was genuinely loyal, if he genuinely loved you, mm. he wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And if she was a very good friend, she wouldn't be doing that, mm. bro. Do you know what I mean? So you have to look, take a step back and be like, yo, mm. these two people that my soul loves, mm. that's incredibly painful. I'm getting out there. And it's good to internalize and see it at face value. Mm. But it's how you present it before God. Like what Ruben said, cast your cares before God because he cares. Mm. So you're going to have to cast that to God, man. Mm. And I feel like even in the Bible, like you see like the Ten Commandments. I swear one of them is like not to commit adultery, although they're not married or whatnot. Mm. But it's just another thing. Like if your boyfriend or your ex, whoever it is right now, was mm. cheating on you, he's not the person for you. Mm. I kind of, I can relate to her in a sense where, the whole forgiveness thing, 
like even though you were saying like yeah you've got to do it mm. i think it takes time yeah, me personally yeah. it yeah. took it took me a very long time to forgive someone that brutally destroyed me right. mm. so it takes time you get there but you're gonna have to want to also um want to forgive that person mm. because i realized that because i wasn't forgiving him and i wasn't accepting certain things me myself i was hurting mm. he's not hurting he's, he's not crying like he's, he's, he's not doing anything nothing, yeah. <laughs> he's not doing anything nothing, yeah. so just w- have the mindset of you know what you want to get past that you want to be able to be civilized and okay with the situation and the person have the heart to want to do it and pray about it and god will help you forgive the mm. person and your friend and yeah so let me i don't sorry before i, I come on to Bel- um belinda oh, you, you, oh, oh. no i don't have anything to say i think what i just wanted to, um i would have said is um i think for me it's just fixing your eyes in jesus because Um, we understand that Christ died for our sins and imagine, just like Joel said, imagine um, not forgiving others, but Christ forgave even the deepest sins that Mm. you do, the sins that nobody sees. So I think, um, yes, it's going to be hard because obviously that's your friend, that's someone you trust, but it's just understanding that despite whatever has happened, um, first of all, it calls for forgiveness in order for you to move on and it calls... it calls for you to fix your eyes on Jesus because mm. he forgave you even mm. when you didn't deserve it. Mm. Also, just to add on as well, I think, you wanna go? Um, so, um, my mind was comes back to that story in the Bible where Jesus is there and um, the Pharisees and those high priests, they bring him a woman who has committed adultery. Oh, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Um, they tell him that, they ask him, teacher, like, is it right that we stone her because she has committed adultery? Yeah. So Jesus starts writing on the floor, really, for a stick or something. Yeah. He's just writing. And he says, if there's anyone among you that has not sinned, yeah. cast the first stone. stone. Yeah. So sometimes you have to reflect upon yourself. Like, it's hard to forgive. It's very difficult mm. to forgive. But with time and with grace, you can do that. You mm. can do that. You can actually reach that place where you're like, you know what? You did this to me. It hurt me really in a deep place. But I forgive you of your sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to look towards yourself. Like, I have sinned so many times, countless times. Mm. How many sins do I sin a day? But <laughs> yeah. Jesus forgives me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he renews me yeah. each and every single day. Yeah. So even as we are looking at him, who is the author and finisher of our faith, mm. we have to learn these things from him. Mm. Like, how does God forgive me? Mm. How did he forgive people? How was he able to come to this world and take and take the burden of all our sins, mm. like the sins of the whole world. Mm. That's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Things that even angels couldn't even do, mm. he came and he did it mm. wholeheartedly. Mm. And he did it perfectly. You mm. get me? So we need to look at him, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm. We need to look at him and look at these things that he has. And mm. we need to draw these things from him, learn from him. How does Jesus forgive me when I sin myself? Mm. And I think the answer will be found in there. Mm. But whoever you are, wherever you are, doesn't matter what the person has done. Mm. The person is not about forgiving. Mm. You can actually forgive the person. To add on something as well, um, what Bella said was true as well. Um, for forgiveness is like you drinking poison. I'm for, sorry, unforgiveness is like you drink poison, expecting that person to die. The only person that hurts is only you, because mm. you're gonna kill yourself. Why? Because you're drinking a poison. Mm. So in other words, when you carry the burden of unforgiveness here, you're only you're only um what's it called? You're only delaying your calling with God. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like you're it's like Maybe you take two steps forward and you take five steps back. Why? Because of unforgiveness. That's why the Bible says that forgive so that the Father will forgive you. So if you're not forgiving um, people yet, then Christ can't forgive you. Why? Because he wants you to extend that love that he has for you onto others as well. In other words, Christ has put a love into us. Remember? Love. Yeah, he's put love into us here yeah, because what he done on the cross here. Yeah, he wants us to manifest that onto other people as well. So if you're not manifesting that love onto other people yeah, then people, people, then people call you a Christian. Why? Because... The Bible says that the sacrificial love is for someone to lay down his life for someone else. That's the ultimate um, love. So are you willing to lay down your pride or to lay down the, 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 the anger, the bitterness to receive what Christ has for you? And it's also got to do with like reading the word and praying. Because sometimes you, try, you can try to forgive the person by yourself, yeah? But it doesn't work. It only takes the, the, the Holy Spirit to help you. And it's a process as well. It's not going to become easy. I don't expect you to say that, okay, cool, today um, I forgive, I've forgiven her or forgiven him. T- it will take time, it will take processes, but in the process, like, what are you doing? Are you spending time with the Father? Are you in the Word? Are you praying? Are you fasting? What are the things you're doing to let go of that forgiveness? You get know what I'm trying to say? And last thing I'll add on is that, uh, on is that um, hatred. The Bible says that um, if, you, if, 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 you, if you hate a brother, you've, you've committed um, murder. 
that's what Jesus says. Jesus says that if you if you hate someone, you've committed murder. I'm paraphrasing. So in other words, if you hate someone, yeah, if you have that hate, that burn desire for something bad to happen, yeah, Jesus said you've committed murder, but you just haven't got the the the, the action to do it. You know what I'm trying to say? So whether it's in your mind is what manifests through your thoughts. I mean, through your actions. Yeah. Like, what I say is that just 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 what I say is that just spend time with God. Mm. If you want to speak to that person, just spend time with God and mm. spend time. Um, uh, uh, reading the word and praying. Like, if you have to distance yourself from from that relationship or that friend, yeah, just do it so that you can spend time with God. That's all I'd say. Yeah, fam. I'm also gonna say Melo actually brought something to my attention as well, fam. Also, check your heart as well, you know. Mm. And it says so because this could also be a one-sided story. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to play like you know. I'm not trying to accuse anything. Mm. I don't know the full story, but mm. like. Bible even says, do not take to heart everything people will say. Mm. For you yourself, you know, in your heart, you have cursed others. Mm. And Ecclesiastes 7. So it could be also be, uh, maybe you should, she has also done something behind mm. the scenes. Then be real. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to pity you, but I'll say, it's I'm looking true, at you. Do you know true. what I mean? Maybe something. Yeah, so true. check your heart as well. Mm. Assess yourself. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's basically it. And also, Jesus also forgave Peter when, when, when he betrayed him. So if Christ can forgive Peter and Christ has given the same spirit that was in him, then we also have the capacity to forgive, but maybe it might not be now, but strive in a process to try and forgive her or yeah, forgive him or her. And that wait, one more thing. I feel like, yeah, with the situation, what you were saying, don't be so quick to like complain and point out what he's done. Mm. What have you done? Cause that's how I used to be. Like I'll be like, but you did this, but you did mm. that until God humbled me. And it's like, but what have you done? You haven't mm. even assessed your wrongdoings. You're mm. quick to blame the other person. Mm. So now it's like with me, when even someone tells me, oh, I've, I've hurt, um, you've hurt my feelings, hurt me, I'm quick to say sorry because I don't like upsetting mm. people. Mm. I don't like problems as well. Mm. So do you check yourself first, mm. see where you've gone wrong, then address the situation. It's not, it's not good to blame, blame, blame. And then mm. when they're like, but you did this, this mm. and that, you're quiet. Mm. So yeah, assess yourself first. Yeah, I think that's what mm. I do. Uh, um, cool. So the next question I want to ask you is, um, so this is another one. This is another one relationship. So, so I, I'm in a relationship right now we do a lot of sexual stuff, so Ta- sexual stuff here. Yeah. Wait, 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 he brought you close to class, but they're having yeah, sex. Yeah, but like, like, as in someone could be in the world, yeah, and some maybe, uh, maybe the guy uh, okay, the I understand. And ask me, I feel like, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like, um, you both can stop if you're both on the same path, you both have to have a, a middle ground type of mindset okay. to be able to stop. Because you know, some people these days you have sex with sin and they're like, yeah, break up the person more time, you don't actually have to break up with the person you don't have to be alone sometimes mm. you can actually grow together and stop that sin together because sometimes when you're alone <coughs> it can cause so many things to where you're you can go into like doing things with other people mm. all that stuff so you don't necessarily need to be alone i feel like if you both agree to stop have boundaries mm. you can actually grow from there mm. that's what i have to say Belinda? i think um I can say I'm speaking from experience, but um, what I would say is, I think often is easy to say, um, yeah, like um, you can't get, kind of you can't get out of the relationship because of this and that, but you have to understand that this Christian walk requires a sacrifice. Mm. And often you have to understand that no matter what you're going through in order to kind of flourish or in order to move where God is calling you to move, you're going to have to sacrifice something. Yeah. And something. sometimes that something could be that, you know, a blockage to your blessings or something better. And um, what I would say is boundaries is key. Mm. Um, I know, um, I know it's easier said than done that, yeah, you know, set boundaries, don't do this, don't do that. But if you want something and you desire something, you're going to actively take steps to see that very thing grow. And so um, if it is um, sexual sin that you guys are struggling to do, if the boundaries are are struggling not Mm. to do, if the boundaries are not working, leave the relationship just because um, that's what God is calling you to do in this season. Does it mean that in seasons, um, in seasons after God won't bring you back together? And I feel like that's what... um, needs to be understood but yeah can i pass um, on to me yeah. um what i'll say is um first corinthians 6 verse 18 to 20 let me read it quickly flee sexual immorality every sin that a man does is outside the body 
but he who mm-hmm. comes to mm-hmm. right his sins against his own body. Mm-hmm. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So mm-hmm. the body is not yours, it's for Christ. So you have to preserve it. Like Adam was given the Garden of Eden to take charge over it. Mm-hmm. Your body is your Garden of Eden. If mm-hmm. you don't preserve it, God is going to destroy you because he has put you in charge of that. So you have to take steps to preserve it. How are you going to preserve mm. it? Now, that's the question you have to answer. Mm. You get me? Mm. How can you do that? Yeah. Educate yourself. Invite God in. Invite other people in who are true Christians. The, the lady, was it a lady? The lady said, like, the guy brought her to Christ. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it means the person wasn't genuine in the first place. Like the person is basically a sign mm, a you to the truth. Mm. Yeah. That person, that same person doesn't want you to even experience mm. it. It's like someone directing you to go somewhere and the person is drawing you back. Mm. So you want that for yourself. Mm. If that relationship isn't helping you, you need to distance yourself like our sisters have said. You get me? Mm. And you have to treat your body like the Garden of Eden because he has put you in charge of that to preserve it because his spirit lives in there. Mm. You get mm. the spirit cannot dwell inside a body that is is impure and a body that like is is dirty. You get me? Mm. The yeah. spirit likes to God is clean. He's, mm. he's the definition of cleanliness. Mm. He doesn't like dirt. He doesn't like mm. mismanagement. Mm. So you have to manage your body. Take care Conviction. of yourself. Drink water. Have a proper <laughs> diet. Exercise regularly. <laughs> Stay away from sex. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Joel. Mm. Okay, well, okay, okay. Um, first off, I want the person to know it's hard. Let me just make it very clear because I want I want to make sure I'm being very understanding here. Mm. It is hard being in a relationship, especially in Christ, and when you lot are trying to grow together, but the grace of God is possible. Mm. Let me make it so clear. Um, one of the names of God is Quena, and that basically means a jealous God. Mm. And God is a jealous God. And I'm going to say it plainly, if we choose fornication or the person who we're fornicating with mm. over God, we're basically saying, God, I love this person more than I love you. Mm. Yeah. And you can love God, but not fear God to an extent. Mm. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, whoever commits adultery lacks understanding. The Bible says he destroys his own soul. Mm. Um, it will make the, diff- the relationship quite difficult because once you've tasted something that should have been a beautiful thing that should have mm. been done in marriage and you two, you know how you two feel like, it can really dilute the love. You can say you love the person, but it's like, that's fornicating a couple. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. like, it can really tamper. Okay, I'm just going to briefly outline something. There's four types of love. The Greek called eros love, mm-hmm. which is erotic love. Uh, there's phileo, there's stogi, and then there's the agape unconditional love of God. Mm. And we say there's love, in, but you can commit the erotic love, which is the physical act of it. I'll probably say to that person, as Belinda said, found, find boundaries. Otherwise, um, you lot could really damage your relationship with God and... Um, hinder each other from what God wants you lot to do. But that doesn't mean you should lock it off. But if it's habitually becoming um, a sin you two are dwelling in, mm. if you have a pastor, I'd highly recommend, highly, highly, highly <laughs> recommend coming towards your pastor, tell him to pray for you guys and hear what God is saying. And if, if it's becoming too much of a problem, mm. a decision has to be made. That's, true. That's what I'll say. Let me add on something as well. I think First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 says that, says that love does not rejoice in evil. So in other words, if you feel like you're a bit uncomfortable in that relationship here, that's a sign in itself that you 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 have to take the action maybe to leave. You know what I'm trying to say? You shouldn't be in a place where it's like you're a burden, where sometimes, you know when you're doing something and you feel that conviction, you feel that that that, that guilty conscience. Mm, sometimes, you, sometimes you feel that guilty conscience and that's the Holy Spirit prompting you, telling you that maybe it might not be the right time or might not be the right situation, Not might not be the right time that you should be in a relationship. So I feel like, you need to assess yourself. Is this a time to be in a relationship or is this a time to spend time with God? You know what I'm trying to say? Because the Bible says that to every season, there is a time and a place for everything. There's a time what, for winter and there's a time for summer. In other words, don't confuse winter with summer because if you confuse summer with winter, you're going to be confused. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So I, so I feel like you have to know the season you're in. If it's a season to be single, then be single. If it's a season to be in a relationship, yeah, then now you need to begin to set boundaries. What are the things that you're, you're not going to compromise? Okay, cool. Maybe late nights, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., I'm not going to come and see them. Or maybe certain messages or certain way I speak to them, I won't do it. You get what I'm trying to say? So yeah. they have to take certain precautions if you want to if, if, if you wanna like have a sexual-free relationship. Because one thing that you don't want to do is that you don't want to keep having sex and then have the guilty conscience and then, then you go to, you go to church and then you go on your knees, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, then you keep repeating it, then it becomes a cycle. But take action. 
The word repent means a change of mindset. In other words, turning from your sin and turning to God. So in other words, you have to turn from mm-hmm. what you're doing to God. And once you've turned from your sin and turned to God, yeah, then God can actually deliver you mm-hmm. out of that thing that you're, you're in. You get what I'm trying to say? But yeah, um, I think there's going to be the question. Before. Can I say something oh, quickly? Um, one thing that the Holy Spirit just said to me is that if you have to compromise um, your relationship with God or you have to engage in sexual sin in order to kind of enjoy um enjoy the relationship it was never love it was lust to even begin mm. with so you should have flee mm. run mm. from the start but yeah okay um all right cool so this is the another question I, ha- I have a problem with masturbation yeah i have been masturbating for over five years now uh, i started when i was 15 but now i can't seem to stop it the desires are very strong i can't go a week without it what should i do Watch the previous video on masturbation. I'm joking. Um, I'll probably say um, I'd, I highly recommend watching that video, honestly, mm. um, because I feel like it outlined it the best. Um, yeah, set. I don't even know what to say right now, bro. I'd highly recommend just watching that whole video. That's all I can really say because Princess really outlined it. Ruben and Belinda and myself, I believe, I touched on it a bit. But I maybe mean, that's might not go watch it. So just give me a like, practical step. What would you do? <laughs> Me personally, from masturbating, mm. uh, it just took a lot of fasting and a lot of loving God and a lot of fearing God. <laughs> if I'm being quite honest with you, because you're saying personally, I fasted a lot for the desires to be quenched. Mm. I prayed a lot. I asked God to help me, and um, He helped me. Mm. Yeah. Um, when I was standing out there, um, I was just like deeping stuff, and the Holy Spirit said to me, um, "What you accept becomes your truth." And um, I feel like when it comes to masturbation, pornography, and stuff like that, the minute you accept that that is your truth, that's when you you feel like you're bound to it. But no Christian is bound to sin, mm. and so it's understanding that you can't accept whatever that the enemy has like um, said concerning you. You have to accept that there's a God who has given you freedom on the cross. So you have to kind of learn to kind of um, learn to accept that and walk in that truth but practical steps um i would say is um start blocking your pages Mm. um you you make room for what you desire um if it's pornography that you desire you will keep going and going Mm. and going if it's god that you desire like i said before it's going to need a sacrifice and that sacrifice is going to be the very thing that stops you from getting to where you need to be um other things um like i said guard your ears guard guard your eyes um share honestly share talk to people talk to people that you can trust um so that the enemy doesn't keep you silent but that's what i would say um i just want to speak about like sexual sin Mm -hmm. um i feel like with me is a mindset thing once you put your mind to something you will do it like with me i just told myself i don't don't want to do that anymore and i didn't like it's not even like a peer pressure thing i don't even get peer pressured I wanna, i'll be so honest so it's like a mindset with me put your mind to it and i promise you you will not do it and no matter how attractive that girl or boy is mm. you won't mm. like you genuinely won't but you obviously have mm. to feed into god to help you give you that strength to not be able to have sex or masturbate or do whatever you're doing mm-hmm. because i didn't really struggle with masturbation or pornography but i feel like with sexual sin mm. that I was doing it obviously because I was in a relationship, but after mm. that, I just looked back and I thought, what was I doing? Like, mm. Why did I find so much, mm. you know, happiness in mm. this? And bear in mind, I didn't feel no guilt mm. as well. I didn't feel so guilt. I didn't feel not, uh, you become desensitized to it. That's no what happens when you guilt. It happens. So afterwards, it's just like, a, no, I'm choosing celibacy or I'm choosing just not doing this abstaining because I know, I know what's good for me and I know that when I do it the right way, it will be better. Like, Amen. yeah, cool. The feeling may be the same, but I will just feel better within myself. Like I'm doing it the right way. Do you get it? It's full marriage to so keep it to marriage. I feel like mm. God doesn't, he doesn't um, put things in the Bible, or whatnot for us to be, you know, upset. Like there's a reason why he says no sex until marriage. So I say, understand that reason. And then you'll keep your hands, fingers and legs to yourselves. Yeah. Amen. Um, <laughs> you're gone. Um, what I would say is, um, even Paul said the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. Yeah. So that brother and sister, what I would say is the person is going, like, the person admitting that he's going through that mm. is really, really good. Like, I would have felt that person for admitting that, yeah, he's, he's as vulnerable as that and he has, he has gone to that part of his life. He has gotten there and he wants to come out of it. Um, one story that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart is when the disciples are trying to cast out a demon, he doesn't come out. Mm. Jesus rebukes the demon and the demon comes out. Mm. And 
the disciples go go to see Jesus later and they ask like, well, why aren't we able to cast this one out? Mm. And Jesus tells them that the, this caliber of it's only by spirit, fasting and prayer. Yeah, it can't be ca- it can't be casted like only through fasting and prayer. You get me? So, yeah. Um, that person needs to really, really step up their praying and fasting mm. game because that can lead them really close to God and that can lead to um, so many things like they can really, really deal with it through fasting and prayer. So they need to take that serious. Do research on fasting and prayer. How can you fast effectively? Mm. How can I pray effectively? You get me? Because it's really, really important. There's the practical s- steps that, like that we've mentioned earlier. There are those ones. But I think fasting and prayer also plays a really huge mm. role and it could really help them. Can let me add on something as well. I feel like when you're in a relationship here, first you need to uh, analyze three, three things Adam had in a relationship. First, he had a personal relationship with God. Secondly, he had a a, a work. He was working. He was tending the garden. Thirdly, he um he knew himself. He knew who he was. So if you're gonna be in a relationship, you need to have all these three things. And I'm saying that. Do you know Christ? Do you have a strong relationship with Christ? Because if you have a strong relationship with Christ here, yeah, that lust, that desire is going to get to you. Because you know what I'm saying? The, the less, the less, the, the more you spend time with God, is the less time you're going to have time, you're going to have less time for lustful thoughts. You know what I'm trying to say? So I'm trying to say that spend time with Christ. Like it's Christ. Christ has to be your all in all. In other words, I'm not going to compromise my sin. I'm not going to compromise my sin because of lust. You know what I'm trying to say? Or because of the lust of the flesh. You have to be disciplined in your walk with Christ because any, any like the devil can send anyone and anyone anyone and anyhow mm-hmm. to come and just mismanage your life and so you definitely have to have the spirit of discernment you have to is this person that i'm with you is he is she or he good for me if that person's not good for you then you have to really evaluate that person's life saying that does that person have the same characteristics as me can i build a family with that person that does that person like can i trust him or can i trust her if you can't trust him or her yeah and every time that they, they have their friends. You have to look at the the messages to see if they're talking to other girls or other boys here. Yeah. Then you can't. Then you can't really trust them. So I'm trying to say that if we're gonna have a strong relationship, you first start with Christ. Let Christ be at the center of your relationship. Because if Christ is not at the center of your relationship, that relationship will crumble. It's like the house. One built his house on what a uh, sand. Another, another person built his house on what a rock. In other words, Christ was trying to say that the person who built his hand on a the person who built his house on a sand. Um, when the storms of life came, it, well, it, it, it destroyed the house. Why? Because it had no foundation. Mm. And the Bible says that when the person um, who uh, built his house on a rock, yeah, had, because um, he had Christ in the rock here, the, the storms of life came here, yeah, but it couldn't destroy it. Why? Because Christ was his foundation. Mm. In other words, if Christ is not your foundation, that relationship, yeah, that relationship will crumble. It may mm. look good in social media, in Insta, on Snap, yeah, that you guys are taking nice pics, but deep inside, there could be like a problem that you need dealing with and it's maybe it might be only christ who can deal with not maybe christ is the only one who can deal with that problem you know what i'm trying to say also with the point of masturbation as well is that um the person who's talking about masturbation yeah i have a book as i said before yeah it's called the christian sex it's very it's a very good book like that book contains a lot of transparency like that person goes into it you know when there's some books here where it's like they don't really talk about sense like this guy talks about every single thing that the sex he had like um, the masturbation, <laughs> the pornography, the time he watched it, the lotions, all of that. He speaks about everything. He's so transparent about it. So one thing I'll say is like, get this book. Because the Bible says that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Mm. If I have no lack of knowledge here, then you're going to perish. Why? Because you need information. Yeah. And once you have information here, that's your power. That's what the Bible says. Well, that's what someone says that. Um, it, wait, it says knowledge without power is what? Dead. Is it knowledge without power is dead. Something like that. But so just feed yourself um, um, the word of God. And also... Um, Block certain social medias. Like, there's not all Instagrams, Twitter, Snaps, uh, um, YouTube videos that you should be watching. There are certain things that you shouldn't be watching that um, may arouse you. you know what I'm trying to say, I may arouse maybe you masturbating. For example, um, if someone maybe watch, you know, the smash and pass videos. Someone might watch it and they might get aroused. If you know that that's not that's not good for you, yeah, don't watch it. Or if you know maybe there's a there's a movie that you know that it might get you aroused, or there's a sex movie, then you shouldn't watch it. Block everyone, maybe the person you're communicating with, maybe that person's not good for you. So block them. Or someone who you're spending time with is not helping you, block them. Because you have to take like, precautions or else it's going to crumble, you get know what I'm trying to say? But yeah, that's what I'd say. I think this is the last one, then we're done. Um, so this is the... Oh, do you, do you want to add one something? No, 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 no. Okay, cool. Uh, cool, this is the last one. Also, sorry, last thing I'll say is that <laughs> you need to have an accountability partner as well. 
The Bible says that the, um, the Bible says walk with the wise and become wise. In other words, if you don't pray, if you're not praying for people who have godly wisdom, yeah, you're going to fall. You know what I'm trying to say? You need to have wisdom people in your in your circle. Yeah. So if you're if you're masturbating and all your friends are masturbating, all the people you're you're chilling with, the GC is talking about masturbation, pornography, yeah, then you're going to actually the urge is going to get to you. But if you if you spend time with people who are godly people who are Christians, yeah then you're going to come through. Like Christ is going to help you. Why? Because you're only as strong as your surrounding. That's what the Bible says that a bad company corrupts good character. So if you're hanging out with a bad company, they're going to corrupt your mentality and your, your mental health. Your mental health, your, your mentality. Yeah. So cool. The last one I want to ask you here is that this is a suicidal thoughts. So I have commi- so I have, I have, I have thoughts of committing suicide. I've tried to take my life sev- on several occasions, but every time I try to take it, something tells me to stop. I feel worthless. My life has no meaning. What should I do? Um, I feel like mm, you have you do have a meaning for life only because you're here for a reason. I feel like if you weren't meant to be here, you wouldn't be here. Mm. So I feel like fix your fix your eyes on the truth. Don't focus on the world more, but put like focus on on the word. Wait, what did I just say? Focus Don't on focus the on the world yeah, focus more. On focus word. on the word instead. And whether you're a Christian or not, um, suicide. The, the feeling in itself is heavy in it mm. so you need to take it seriously don't listen to people if they're just like oh you'll get over it mm. no you honestly need to take it on board because you could do it do you understand mm. and what happens then so i feel like speak to people get a counselor or a therapist um pray if you're a christian like pray um the feeling of I don't know, feeling unworthy. You need to love yourself first. Whether you have a boyfriend or friends or family that just always fill you up with their words of affirmation, give yourself words mm. of affirmation. Love yourself first. Put yourself first. Like Know who you are. Be able to define yourself before someone else defines you. Mm. So figure out yourself first. And through that, through the love that you gain within mm. yourself, you'll start feeling more well. So I don't know what she's saying as well. I believe that the only love that you can feel or you can find in yourself is only Christ. Christ is the one who shows you the true love. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So if you find Christ and you find what true love is, so if you don't find Christ and you find love which is like a replica of what love is, but it's actually not love, because love can be, de- be defined by sex, having sex with someone, mm. it can be love. But if you find love in Christ, who created you, who is your source, your provider, then that's what true love is through his word. You know what I'm trying to say? Because the Bible says that the word is truth. Um, I don't want to say something. Okay, Joel. Jo. This is a speciality. You can go yeah, this is, yeah. Suicide, this is suicidal thoughts. You want to talk about something? Suicidal thoughts. Okay, um, like our sister Joel was saying, um, it's, it's a heavy feeling. And first and foremost, I'm sorry that that person is going through that right now. Mm. I pray for the best for that mm-hmm. person. So what I would say is, yeah, um, you basically said it, like help someone who's a, who you're accountable to. And it's hard to, some people do, some people don't. Mm. But just look around your environment. God can literally lead you to someone to speak to you. But mm. all you have to bear in mind is that you're not alone. God mm. is with you. In mm. all your ups and all your downs, he's there by your side. Yeah. Your friends are going to leave you. Your parents might not understand mm. you, but he understands you. Because he sees the overall picture. You get me? You don't. Mm. Because he's sovereign. He's, he's above and beyond. Mm. He sees everything. Mm. Nothing escapes his eye. Mm. So if he sees, then he knows. Mm. He feels how you're feeling. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. Because he was even willing to put himself in that sh- in those shoes by coming literally physically on earth to come die for you. Mm. So you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're loved. If you want to seek, um, if you want to seek professional help, please do. Mm. But just know that um, prayer and fasting can also help. And just know that bear in mind that you're loved and that this too shall pass. Yeah, mm. this yeah. too shall pass. Mm. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to add on something? No. Um, I think what I would say is um. The first step to healing is acknowledging that something is wrong to even begin with. Mm. So um, the fact that you acknowledge that, um, you know, you're going through it, um, that is the first step to healing. Um, I would say if you're a Christian, seek Christian um, counselling. Um, and yeah, definitely pray. But um, one thing I would say is always voice out or write out how you feel. Um, I've never gone through that, so I can't really share much mm. light. But um, I know that when I'm going through it, um, I'm the type of person to just um, write how I feel on notes. Or um, I remember there was a time in my life where um, I wasn't like, 
I was in the press, but I was like going through like a season. You know when you feel like yeah, caged. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I was going through like a season where I was caged, and I remember um people just um giving me prophetic words saying, "Ah, oh, Belinda, you need to um open up to God, open up to God." And I feel like I had um this mentality that because I am Belinda and God is sovereign, He already mm. sees what I'm going yeah, through. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you just need to go out and just pour everything, mm. every single thing to Him. And yeah, that's what I would say. Mm-mm. Do you want? Wow, man. Uh, I just keep pressing. Call up, call upon God, and know who you are in Christ. Remember, mm. the very hairs in your head are numbered. Mm. Bible says, though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things mm. which he suffered. Mm. He had to go through it just like you. Um, there's a scripture I always love. This the idea that Jesus had to overcome depression so that mm. you yourself can overcome depression, mm. bro. I feel like people feel like, geez, you can't relate, but you never had no suicidal mm. thought. Who told you that? Mm. In order for him to overcome it, he had to go for it. Mm. That's why some, there's a there's a, there's a saying that goes, um, he who has the stone in his foot knows where it hurts. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? And if the same person has that stone in their foot, they can understand. Mm. And so he understands. Um, and so that's why when you sign up for the judgment seat of Christ, you can't say, oh, but geez, you know, you never know how it felt like when I was going through suicidal thoughts. <laughs> you don't know how it's like when my boyfriend broke my heart. <laughs> he said, but hold on, you broke my heart many times. <laughs> when when my own father forsake, forsook me, I thought there was no point in living <laughs> as well. So he can very much relate with you. <laughs> and I think it's very important for you to understand he can relate. And I think it's very important for you to cry. Mm. I know this sounds a bit mad, yeah. it's it's true. but it's I, be real, like, I yeah. think it's very important. Bible says, by a sad countenance, the heart is made better, bro. Mm. Even at the end of laughter, there's still there may still be mirth. Mm. So wallow. <laughs> if you have to wallow, wallow. <laughs> but then after you're done wallowing, you better get up well mm. and go to your father well. Mm. Wallow with the father and go to the father boldly. Um, that's what I have to say. Yeah, that mm. is good. It's thank you guys. Um, also, to, I don't know as well is that um. For you to be here, you must have some sense of significance. In mm. other words, you value your life that you're still alive. In other words, I truly believe that you know Judas here. Yeah, Judas, Judas' story is very, is that profound? Is that the reason why Judas committed suicide is because he felt he was worthless. You know, in other words, he felt that he could not come back to God. In other words, he felt that he felt that he betrayed the Son of Man, that he could not come back to God. So, in other words, but you are not like Judas. You are someone who cried. God created Jesus, not going to lie. He created Jesus. But I believe that if Jesus was, was to turn and repent of his sins, Christ would have forgiven Judas him. Judas committed suicide. Yeah, he committed yeah. suicide, yeah. Oh. This is so, a hard saying. Yeah, this he is a hard could, yeah, yeah. So I believe that if Judas turned from his sin and turned back to God, he would have, he would have been freed. Mm. But with you, yeah, Christ loves you with an uh, everlasting love. Mm. And I believe that everything you're going through here yeah, is not a part of your identity, but it's a part of your testimony. You, in other words, what you're going through here yeah, is going gonna, gonna to tell people of your story, how you overcame it, yeah. of how you went through so much trial, so much tribulation, mm-hmm. so much pain. And through that is how people are going to learn your story. Sometimes if we go through mm-hmm. stuff here yeah, and we don't realize it's Christ mm-hmm. who's, who's helping us through that situation so that we can tell people of what he has done in our lives. And what I say is that mm-hmm. do not make a permanent decision by temporary circumstances. Mm-hmm. As Edwin said, it says that these two shall pass. Mm. In other words, what you're feeling is seasonal. It's not, it's not, it's not permanent. Yeah. In other words, you're in a time of season where you're feeling suicidal thoughts, but it's going to come another season where you're going to be feeling happy, joyful, if you remain in Christ. You know what I'm trying to say? So remain in the word, remain in prayer. Christ is there for you. Christ, he's never left you or forsake you. I know you might feel like it. I know sometimes you might feel like there's, some, there's a big burden in your life, but as you as you, you pull onto Christ here, Christ also pulls back onto you as well. You know what I'm trying to say? So don't mm. leave Christ. Christ is there with you. And one thing I'll leave it is like analogy of a cake, right? Think about a cake. Um, a cake is made of what? How many ingredients? What? Flour, baking powder, milk, oil, sugar. <laughs> I have to research this as well. Um, and what, what is it? Um, but uh, all of that, yeah. So um, when you're making a cake here and you've made, uh, you put the sugar and the eggs together here, yeah? When you taste the cake um, midway, yeah, you will say that this cake, this doesn't taste like mm-hmm. cake. Why? Because it's, it hasn't been mixed together. In other words, what you're going through is a part of the process. In other words, you can't say that, oh, Christ, what am I going through? This? What am I going through? This? Yeah, it, will all, it will all be revealed at the very end why you have to go through that to overcome it. I know some certain, certain times, certain situations, yeah, sometimes it happens. Sometimes we don't, we don't want to go through it, but it comes to us. But sometimes yeah, we go to that thing for it to come. But regardless of whether you went to it or you, you haven't, yeah, Christ is going to use it as a testimony. You get what I'm trying to say? He's going to use your life as a testimony. You get what I'm trying to say? So mm. don't lose your faith in Christ. Christ is there for you. He's like, depend on him. Stand on the word of God. And every time the devil tried to give you the, um, try to 
give you suicidal thoughts, yeah, re- rebuke him with the word of God. The only way Jesus was mm-hmm. was able to combat the devil is through the word of God. Mm-hmm. He says that man shall not what live by bread alone. What did he do? He used the word of God to rebuke the devil. I've realized that certain times where I've been going through certain phases here, yeah, every time I use the word of God against the devil, yeah, he leaves. Why? Because the devil is afraid of someone yeah. who carries authority. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the only way you can carry authority is by living a holy and righteous life, which is only through the Holy Spirit. So the only way that I'm saying is that those suicidal thoughts are, are temporary. It's not permanent. Christ will get you through it. And once he's going through it, yeah, you'll become brighter than, than the sun. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. has anything yeah. else? Oh, you One last thing. I just want to apologize yeah, yeah, to my yeah. wonderful sisters in Christ on the phone. It's not intentional. They're actually looking at Bible verses as well. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case you feel like... Um, and also want to say um, one last thing. I genuinely believe what Jesus experienced on the cross was actually something worse than hell. I genuinely feel like that because yeah. he was the only one in human history to have ever firstly felt the father quite literally turn his back on him. Mm. So um, he kind of, he literally felt loneliness, like literally mm. loneliness. So mm. he can definitely relate. So I'll leave, oh, do you want to say something? Sorry. Um, yeah, a scripture that just came to my mind was um, Colossians um, 3 verse 2 that says, set your minds on things above and not on the things of on the earth for you died and your life is hidden in Christ. Um, I feel like, um, I know it's easy to say, oh, fix your eyes on the things above, but I feel like that could even be kind of a first step to kind of um, overcome the, the thoughts of being not enough or the thoughts of mm. um, just not feeling worth it. Mm. But yeah. Mm. Okay, last scripture, last two scriptures I'll pull out is Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says that all things work together for your good. In other words, it's something that you're going through, but it's going to work out to, for your good, for those who love the Lord. And last scripture that I'll give to you is First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 19. It says that, eyes have not seen ears yeah. have not heard nor has it conceived the human mind the things god has prepared for those who love the lord in other words christ promises you that your future is bright mm-hmm. as as long as you remain in him once you remain in him and you trust in me he will pull you through yeah but yeah um thank you guys for tuning into the christian podcast 101 i really appreciate it i hope that you took something out of this and it can help your life or your your daily schedules what daily schedules daily life or daily principles yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on our, our, our Spotify podcast, wait, Apple podcast. Yeah, so see you soon. Bye. Okay.